going on guys it's today's project guide right back at it again and today is a very special day as you can see we are in my somewhat organized yet somewhat messy tool storage room and we're coming in here to get something that i've been waiting to get into for a very very long time uh let's take a look here at the masses again here's the pile of parts that i've got some of them i mean this is the majority of the stuff that i have but <laughs> i'm not going to show you the other room it's a mess boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff all right so in here if you look around on this shelf right here this is some of the future projects that we're going to be working on I'll get that caliper out of the way oh there you are oh we got the good old 2g eprom ecu sitting here and uh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna crack into this thing real fast. Let's, all right. So if you haven't figured it out yet, we're about to get ready to start messing with some of this stuff here. We got our long-awaited package coming in the mail within a few minutes. Oh, one-handed opening. Let's see here. Oh, sorry for the close-up, boys. And the sounds of plastic. Woo! Here is. My 2G EEPROM ECU in all of its glory. Uh, it's got a DSM Link V2 system or chip installed in it. It's a socketed ECU. I got a really killer deal on this. And it works. It runs great. It does everything it needs to do. But we got V3 in the mail today. And it also came with an AEM Series X wideband, which we are going to be using in the front to. Uh, simulate our narrowband o2 sensor signal and we're just going to replace that with our aem series x wideband and wire that in and we're going to hook it up to the correct pin on the side of here i think it's pin 96 or 95 i can't remember i gotta look at my my writing i haven't installed the system in a 2g ever and uh, this will be my first time so what we're going to do is we're going to get all the small stuff knocked out in preparation for the box to be dropped on the doorstep in the moments coming we're going to get ready to just plug the cable in, wire in our sensor, and hopefully everything goes nice and smoothly. We can get this thing on V3 by the end of the day. So if this package doesn't show up till later tonight, it is what it is. We'll start first thing tomorrow morning. But in the meantime, I'm more excited than you know. So we're going to jump right into the computer stuff, and let's hop on the laptop. Let's get on over. All right, boys, so here we are. We are on the ECM tuning page. First thing we're going to end up doing here, I've already jumped through some of these steps. Uh, I figured I'd show you guys what you got to do to get logged in here. Uh, you don't need the CD or anything. You can come right over to their web page and you can come right in to get the program. The program is free. It's the, the chip, the flash module, and the data cable. That's the big money there. So uh, I've got my kit coming from Extreme PSI for $545. And I also picked up the AEM Series X wideband kit with the gauge, the controller, the wiring, and the sensor. And I think that was like $180 also from there, or $160, I can't remember. But uh, here we are. What we're going to do is we're running a Windows 10 laptop. So what we're going to do first, you're going to click right here. If you're running Mac, you're going to download the Mac, but you're going to just click this. It's a Windows full install, and you're going to get that program downloaded. You're going to click on it, open it up. It's going to have an install wizard. You're just going to go through and install the system. And once that's finished, that'll drop you with a little link right here, an icon on your desktop, the ECM link. I created a folder right here, ECM link v3, and we're gonna save all our logs and all our important information in that folder. And this is the program to start. Um, once you get that, you're gonna wanna come over to the same downloads page, and you're gonna wanna go up to the latest and greatest tab here, and again you're gonna download this for windows computers it's the windows xp vista 7810 uh it says february 9th 2018 40 meg it's an exe format file we're gonna download this that's the second download you see down here in the bottom that actually is the update for the the latest features and program capabilities so we, i downloaded that and now i'm stuck until the system comes in uh, with the firmware update, which is also back here. We're going to go home, and this is the part you have to do in the car once the ECU is all plugged in and you have your cable in the OBD2 port. So we're going to wait on this last step. You have to 
flash the fresh firmware to the ECU and you just come down here on the home you go to firmware upgrade which is in the bottom right you can see me clicking and you have to come over here and you have to choose a certain file and flash it to the ECU I'll show you guys what you got to do to get to that point um, all this is pretty familiar I remember doing some of the stuff with my 1G and I've been wanting to get this on the 2G for so long so anyway that's the major part that you have to get done as far as computer software goes and once you have that done UCM links right here you double click it pops open and this is the the page you're met with and we can do nothing more here until we are able to connect and once we can connect we can uh, verify we have a connection verify everything's open and ready to rock we'll do our firmware update so we have ECM link v3 set up here boom step one knocked out three quarters of the way we just have to we have to do that firmware. that's the last thing alright so now we're gonna move on to step number two and that is preparing our ECU for the flash module install so let's go ahead and grab that okay so here we are we've got the ECU in our lap here I'm doing this inside just because first thing we're gonna do is take out these little screws there should be four of these on your ECU I think I only have three on mine because I don't know this is how it came so we're gonna crack all these puppies free so once that's done this top cover will come off so you carefully take that off I'll set that off to the side for right now and here's what you're met with now this ECU was sent out it was socketed it was serviced the capacitors were replaced I believe um, that's what I was told but if you look down here in the bottom right corner this is the socket that we're after and you can see it says DSM link v2 2856 there's an ID number I assume for verification of what chip it is or whatever I'm not sure what it's all for but it's got a socket on it so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take this chip out and this is where we're gonna install our flash module and this is something that you have to make sure you do correctly because I, I guess people in the past have installed these chips backwards and, uh, and there's an identifier mark on their website too there's actually if you look closely there's a little notch right here on this side and you can kind of see the print on the board there's a little half moon down there there's a little notch right here on this side of the chip and there's not one on this side of the chip so you want to install the new flash module it's going to have the same identifying chip mark a uh, little half moon cutout. that's we're going to pop this one up carefully take it out we're going to put the new one exactly the same way in with that little indent on this left hand side alrighty so here we are we've got the chip carefully pried out I actually used a little plastic tool from my cell phone repair kit which I have down here I can show you this is the uh, oh where does it say oh somewhere this is the iFixit cell phone repair kit that I purchased a while back and I use this when I'm uh, working on repairing cell phone screens or changing cameras or whatever I do that on the side sometimes comes with this really cool magnetic bit box it's got all the little tips and such and little tools that you could ever think of that you're gonna need when removing uh, cell phone components or screens or whatever it is so I use this handy little uh, plastic blue pry tool and carefully wedged it up under either side on the left and right of this chip and I did get it to pop out completely without bending any of the uh, connection terminals here I didn't hurt any little legs on it you can see that so we're gonna set this bad boy off to the side store it someplace safe for the time being and now our ECU is ready to have actually give you a shot of this little from the top down here the uh, this is what the socket looks like uh, essentially all they did was desolder the old uh, the old computer chip that was in place of this and they just replaced it with this board the socketed board and they soldered that down to the existing board and uh, now you have something that you can swap either if you have different chips if you burned a chip um, you can swap out a burn chip here into the same socketed board here and what we're gonna do is put our ECM link flash module carefully in its place and I can actually give you a better look here at the uh, half moon here that I was talking about all right 
focus there you can see that little notch right there and the same little notch is what I was saying earlier corresponds with the tiny little notch on the side of this chip here there you go now you can see it guys sorry I'm still trying to figure this uh, gimbal out but anyway we are now ready for our package to show up so in the meantime we're gonna leave this stuff sit here and what we're gonna do is go outside and start preparing our O2 housing for uh, narrowband removal what we're going to be working on there's a couple of things first step is going to be under the hood but I'll show you guys where we're gonna be looking there's my dirty filthy carpet uh, right down here we're gonna have to remove this kick panel uh, there's a Phillips head way down there and a Phillips head over here and that's gonna give us access to uh, behind the dash area where the uh, ECU is stored that's down in there so we're gonna remove this side we're gonna remove the opposing side all right so we're back here under the hood what we're gonna do is we're going to clean off this is the O2 sensor that we're going to remove right down here let me see if we can zoom in a little there you can kind of see that uh it's sitting down there we're gonna get this thing cleaned off a little bit uh we're gonna clean off the edges of where we're going to hook up our o2 sensor removal tool and uh spray it down with some brake parts cleaner pb blaster and get it ready to be ripped out because that's one we're gonna simulate narrow band too i just got this package it ran late, of course, when you're expecting something, it always runs a day late. But it made it here from ExtremePSI.com, and I just cut the tape on the top, and I was like, shoot, better grab the camera. So this is the package that showed up. It came, nothing's wrong with it. Cut the tape, and as I can see peeking through, I'm excited, boys. The significance of this is uh, it's a pretty, pretty big deal for me. I've been wanting this product for quite a while. And right here, we've got our brand new AEM Series X wideband and we're gonna get this thing unboxed first I guess and we'll save the we'll save the big deal for for a minute from now all right so here we have our brand new gauge this thing's pretty uh pretty clean pretty thin too the last uh, wideband that I had was a fat one I think it was a uh, innovate but uh yeah this is a uh, pretty small I'm gonna have to read the manual on this and figure out what settings I need so I don't cook anything. That's something important I'm just gonna note here. If you guys are doing this, make sure you follow the instructions. Your ECU cannot handle a 12 volt signal from this. It will burn it out, so you have to find the zero to five volt output and make sure you connect it correctly. That's our wiring harness. Nice solid pigtails, nice wrapping along the uh, harness there. Let's see what else she comes with. All right, looks like we've got some connectors, a rubber band to hold the extra wiring. Oh, and we got a bung so we can hook this bad boy up. We're not gonna need that, we're gonna save that, and I'm, I'm not gonna crimp these wires together. I'm gonna solder and heat shrink. And this looks like the sensor end. No, this is the harness end that, okay. So this looks like the one that plugs into the oxygen sensor itself and runs back to the display. This, looks like the section that plugs into the display on one end and the other end goes to power ground and sends your narrowband signal to pin 76 of the ECU. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. I believe it's the white wires, the zero to five volt that we're gonna use to log with ECM link. And uh, yeah, that's that. Let's see. All right, there's our brand new sensor. Pretty little guy, nice little Serial port on the back side. Well, no, it's not a serial port. Heavy-duty plastic plug. And here we go. Let's get to these instructions. This is something that I wanted to throw in here just because. And we'll put the other stuff back in for right now. All of our cables, our hardware. Carefully put our sensor back in there. We don't want to knock that around too much. And our pretty little gauge. All right, so I got the paperwork here. And this should give us a breakdown uh, for anybody that's looking for it. All right, this is the table of contents here, gotcha. Okay, this is the page that I was interested in. For any of you guys who need this wiring diagram, let's see here. And get a nice still shot of it there. You can pause the video if you need to read that if you're messing around with one or hooking one up for yourself. 
get a little close up for you. Looks like gives us a color pin out of each wire. White analog wire is the one we're gonna end up using, I believe, to log. And we have our analog sensor ground. So these two need to go to our ECU. That should be easy enough. And I think, like I said earlier, it's pin 76 that we have to hook up to. I do have an inline fuse already that's out in the car. All right. Get this out of the way. Oh, here she be. Oh, this is nifty. Looks like there's a little cable. I'm sure this is a important part of this whole system. It's probably for some additional accessory hookup. All right, caution. Observe precautions before handling electronic sensitive devices. All right, so we're gonna set that down. Here's the infamous cable, the ECM link cable. This is the one that I've been waiting on. They didn't have it in stock for a little while, but here we go. That's fantastic. Software, which I already have installed on the laptop, but they give you a hard copy of it. Quick reference instructions. This will tell you how to get through their wiki, startup procedures, what to do in the beginning uh, during installation. And there's, wow, actually some really nice included instructions with a uh, color copy on the backside. So here's that if any of you guys need it. Slowly pan that through. Pause the video and read if you need to. Okay, there's a couple of pages of this. So that's ECU wiring. This is 2G clutch cut wiring instructions. Beautiful. And here is our reference for our chip installation. We popped the other one out yesterday. And that beautiful little red gem is gonna be sitting in this box. So let me go grab the ECU and we'll start putting all this stuff together. All right, so here we are. We've got our old, well, we've got our cable here. Let's get that out of the way. This is our old chip that I took out yesterday. This little puppy is the V3 flash module that we've been after forever. All right, so what we're gonna do is take our ECU and this is the proper orientation. You want it so the uh, plugs are at the top. And let's see if I can get this in a good shot for you guys. Okay, we'll carefully set this down. Now this is where this chip goes. As we showed you yesterday, that's where the old one came from. So we're gonna carefully pull this out of the box as to not hurt anything. And there she is. It's actually sitting on this little piece of foam pressed in. So we're gonna take this puppy, we're gonna get this plugged in real fast, line up all the pins, and just let it sit in there for a second. And you just gotta go around it and verify that all the pins are in. And all my pins look like they are nice and square. Perfect, you can see how it's sitting flush. It's not tilted or bending anything and all we're gonna do is carefully press this into place light amount of pressure and there we are the chip is seated and you'll notice that there's a little gap there just like the last one had but all the pins have made it into the sockets all the way around. You can see that they're nice and flush. That's it for the ECU side. Now what we gotta do is get the cover back on this puppy and we're gonna have to get outside here. Some stuff that I picked up, uh, we got right here. We've got an inline fuse. This is gonna have a five amp fuse inside of it. Uh, maybe a 10, I'm not 100% sure. We're gonna roll with that. We've got a Equus cheap AutoZone brand uh, gauge pod. We're gonna use that to mount the gauge someplace or we're gonna use one of the vents, I'm not 100% sure. I uh, picked up this O2 sensor crow foot wrench and it's actually got a half inch drive slot in it so you can hook up a half inch ratchet or an extension. And due to the uh, weird place that this O2 sensor is located down here, I needed something 
a little different than the standard straight long socket. So this one's gonna be what we use. Um, let me see, there we go. What we're gonna end up doing is disconnecting that oxygen sensor plug that runs across the front and connects down there. We're gonna get that out of there. I'm gonna hold on to that sensor for later, but instead we're gonna put our AEM wideband sensor in, route the cable straight across, and follow the stock location around under the plenum and we're gonna go right in underneath that brake fluid reservoir to the steering boot and pass it through to the car. Okay, so it's an absolute bear if you haven't taken that front O2 sensor out. I've got mine right over here. Uh, continuous amount of heat, a 7 8 box end wrench and an O2 socket. Uh, it took a damn long time to get this thing out of there. I ended up having to snip it to get, to, uh, get some access to it. I didn't want to have to do that. It was a working sensor, but well, it is what it is. We're on to replacing it with our new one. So now that that's pulled out, that's step one. Step two, we're going to disconnect this battery. We're going to go inside the car. We're going to pull our new oxygen sensor, our wideband sensor wiring through the steering boot over there. I'll probably push it up and out and then just pull it around where I need it to be. Uh, try to route it nicely so it's not in the way of anything and from there we're gonna get ready to pull and splice the ECU in. Alright boys so we've got our cable, oh, it looks like I got it a little tangled up right here. Our AEM wideband cable, we pass it down through the uh, driver's side, uh, through the steering boot. Let me see if I can get a shot down there of that. Let's see if I can get her to focus. There we go. Uh, it's passed in right, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right straight down. You can see a, uh, there's a vacuum hose down there too, and that's running my boost gauge. Uh, now we are going to disconnect our battery, which I don't think I need to show you, but where are we going here, camera? All right, so here we are on the driver's side floor. I pulled the kick panel off over here, and if you look straight back, Let's see. Yeah, there you go. You can see the wiring coming through right there. Um, right here, that's your ECU with all the cables going into it. And as you can see, straight ahead, there's those uh, th the cluster of three gold bolts. And above it, there's one gold bolt. Well, to the left of the bottom three, there's that empty space. That's a 10 millimeter bolt. You got to take that out. And on the passenger side, there's actually two more, I believe. If you look at the ears on your ECU, you'll be able to see what it looks like if you have the EEPROM in your hand. Uh, the other side, we're gonna take the passenger kick panel out, and we're also going to pull the uh, two 10 millimeter bolts on that side out, and that's gonna free up our ECU. So I'm gonna disconnect the battery real fast, and I'm gonna get the other side pulled off. I'll show you what it looks like, and we're gonna get this ECU pulled down so we can start wiring everything in. All right, guys, so after a little bit of battle in here, I've gotten the black box out. It was in like so. Let me get you set up here. It went in straight like that and it pulls out. So when you lay it down, the pins you're looking for are going to be on this plug right here, which plugs into the end right here. Now we're looking for 75, I believe, and we're also looking for 92. So if we turn this sideways, you can actually see on the bottom right that black wire, that's the sensor ground. That's what we're gonna tie into for our brown wire. And we're gonna tie into the fifth pin on this this plug right here, which one, two, three, four is, looks like four is empty and we want five. So one, two, three, four, five. So the white wire right there above my thumbnail is the fifth pin in and I got to verify either five or six which one is uh, the front O2 I think it's 75 I may be wrong let me double check and I'll get back to you but regardless we're gonna splice our white wire for our wideband in at this white wire right here and we're gonna do it after this big wad of uh, I think these are like noise reducers for the electrical, like diodes or something. So we're going to come down here and cut this tape. We're going to get one of the wires right about here, splice it into the uh, wiring for our wideband, and then splice the brown wire into this bottom right plug, this black one. Then we're going to get our gauge in here, wire it 
to our exposed cigarette lighter power and ground we're going to hook up the switched on 12 volt right here to this blue wire which is the power the black wire is the ground and uh i believe we should be all set once we have that set up to go ahead plug in link get the battery hooked up and see where we stand now we'll bolt all this back together i also have to finish all my routing uh one other thing there's these two screws in this bottom duct if you pull them out on either side you can drop this duct down and that actually blows the air down on your feet through the side here uh, that gives you a little bit more wiggling room so I'm gonna verify the pins real fast and I'll get right back to you okay so I figured it out 76 is the one we want so 71 is the first one here so 71 72 73 is green and black 74 is empty 75 is the first white wire 76 is the second white wire so I'm gonna snip this, I'm gonna get in here, run my wiring in here. I don't know where the hell I'm gonna stick that gauge yet, but I will find a home for it. <laughs> so I'm gonna check around real fast, then we're gonna get down here, wire this stuff in, and haul on through the rest of this. All right, boys, so I've gotten my one wideband wire, the, sorry, I'm not using my gimbal right now. I uh, balled up the wires that I don't need, I have, attached the ground for the gauge and the power for the gauge to the cigarette lighter. The power is the blue wire going to the red wire here for the gauge on the gauge end harness. And the ground black wire goes to the black clip that goes to the cigarette lighter right here also. And down here, I spliced in pin 76. This is a heat shrink solder butt connector thing. And I also tied in the brown wire to pin 92 for the ground for the ECU. And those are both connected in the same routine. I'm going to tape this up nice and tight like it was before so nothing's loose and dangling. I'm going to cover the old oxygen sensor. I've got pretty much all the slack I need for things right now. Uh, I'm going to clean this up, get the ECU plugged in, and then I'm going to reconnect the battery and plug in link. Something else we have to do because we're using a uh, basically a non 95 96 cam angle sensor. This is the 98 99 version and it's not adjustable, it's fixed. So if you don't have this, you don't have to click that box and link to uh, invert your cam angle sensor. This we're going to have to invert, and doing so is going to require us to change our firing order. And uh, I actually have a crude diagram that I drew up over here. Let me get you over this way. All right, so this is the stock, if you look at it, cylinders one, two, three, and four. And um, the wiring is like this right now. We have to change it to this. So cylinder one goes to the second coil, cylinder two goes to the third coil, cylinder three goes to the first coil, and cylinder four goes, I don't know, three goes straight across and four goes over here. Okay. It's a little confusing, but it's all right. We're going to get through this. It's not that hard. So. All right, boys. We've got everything hooked up in here. Let's see if we can turn the brightness up on this thing a little bit. Apologize for the glare. Uh, we are ready to start this thing. I've got the gauge crudely mounted right there to the side of the kick panel. Uh, we've got the cable plugged into the lap. <clears throat> Excuse me, to the laptop here. Um, what we're going to do is... First things first, we're going to come over here to our MAF translator. It's still set up for 450cc injectors, uh, or 550cc, I can't remember. One of the two. We're going to zero this puppy back out. She zeroes across the board. All right, so we are going to check in here. We're going to turn the key on, and you go up to, man, I'm jumping all over the place. You go up here to ECU, and you hit Create Firmware Request. And you save that someplace where you can get right back to it. Then you come over here onto the ECM link page. And you come down to the bottom, well, towards the middle here. And it says Firmware Upgrade right there. You're going to get that. And what you're going to do is choose the file that you just requested and saved over here. And then you're going to submit it on this side. It'll give you a file to download. You download that file, open up link, and it'll ask you if you want to install it, and you install it. So we've already done that part. I should have showed you guys, but sorry I didn't. Now we have to get in here and start messing around 
with some stuff. So we're gonna connect for the first time here. I did mess around. I can't say the first time. We're gonna have to connect right now. So we're gonna put our key in. And let's see. All right, key is in the on position. We are connecting. <clears throat> And it looks like we are there. All right, so now what we have to do is go into ECU config. All right, now we're in ECU config. And now that we're there, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna click around for a quick second. We're gonna go to miscellaneous tab. And because we're on 98, we're gonna click the use non-95 style cam angle sensor. Um, let's see. All right, we're gonna go into fuel. We are going to calculate our stock fuel injectors that we have in right now. All right, that's all set up. What else do we have to do? I believe we have to go into ECU inputs. Manifold pressure, it says undefined. Uh, we are going to use Barrow the barrow sensor. Um, our wideband is in the front O2, so we're gonna leave the front O2 as our narrowband simulation. That's also something we have to do under the miscellaneous tab. Or not miscellaneous tab, that's under the NBO2 sim. We're gonna click enable narrowband simulation. Then you have to click here and select which pin you're gonna use. Bugs flying on my screen. All right, so once we have all that stuff set up, we have our narrowband simulation working, we're pretty much ready to roll. So we are going to turn the key into the on position and crank this puppy over to start a stream. Now here is the stream where in the bottom right here, it'll show you how long it's counting for. These are all of the different parameters that you can check out and log. Let me see if I can get... I'm sorry for the crappy angle, guys. It's hard to do this in such a tight space. All right. You got a nice reflection of me recording you. Um, we are going to right-click on this, and we are going to go into displayed values, and continue. All right, so everything that's on this left side is not displayed. Everything on the right side is displayed. So we're gonna look at a few things. We got knock retard, we got speed. I don't really care about speed. Nah, I'll leave it in there anyway. We got throttle position, air fuel ratio estimate. We got math, old air, free, old air fuel ratio estimate, airflow per rev, boost estimate, fuel flow, idle SW, injector duty cycle, load factor, TPS volts, closed loop, RPM speed. All right, so what we're gonna do is go into raw value and we are going to pick our fuel trims. We need our, where is it? TPS raw throttle position, raw knock intake, raw front. We're gonna add raw front O2 volts and that's gonna give us our wideband value also. Let's see. Average air volume per rev. We're going to add that. Then we're going to hit OK. We have to go back over here in ECU info. Settings. It's very important that once you click all these settings here and uh, you do your changes and you set up your 3 inch GM that you click save to ECU. And that's gonna write all the settings in there. And this is our uh, our math comp sliders. And this is where we can adjust our dead time for our fuel injectors and basically help us hit Stoich 14.7 over here on this gauge by making those adjustments. And we're gonna do that with some of the values that are displayed over here in the live data. Go back to the stock ECU setup. 
try again. Boom. All right, so she fires up on stock. So we're gonna have to go around and mess around with some stuff. This is where we've landed right now, boys. I'm learning this just as well as the rest of you. Um, everything's hooked up. I've gotta finish putting my interior back together. My kick panels have to go on. Uh, there's no check engine lights up top. Everything is running the way it should for the most part. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to set some stuff up and get this thing to stop running so damn rich and uh, I'm gonna bring you guys along with it. So now that we've got it fired up We've got our live data log rolling. We can see some information I'm gonna start doing some adjustments based off this and try to get my gauge to read 14.7 at idle and We're gonna have to do some compensation for that 3 inch GM math. So alrighty I'll be back in a minute. Well boys we have got this thing to fire up. We've got it to idle. Uh, next thing on the list is to do a lot more reading, learn some more about this program, and do a little bit of uh, logging, driving up and down the highway for a little while. Uh, obviously keeping a close eye on knock retard and the fuel trims to make sure that nothing goes too lean. I don't care if it's a little bit rich. I just don't wanna blow anything up playing with things that I don't fully understand yet. But I do have a pretty good grasp on this program, and huge shout out to Scott Laird. If you guys don't know who he is, he's got a YouTube channel, and he puts up tons of information on ECM tuning, how to start up for the first time, how to download the program, what you know, basic changes you need to make to get your idle to work correctly, whether your speed density, uh, three and a half or three inch GM math, Evo math. He talks about all that. He talks about fuel trims. He talks about uh, different settings in the miscellaneous tab, how to do uh, all sorts of cool stuff. And he gives really good in-depth detailed instruction and guidance when it comes to uh, getting your car fired up and messing around with things. The, the fuel trims, he goes into the VE, talking about speed density quite deep. Um, just a pretty smart guy. It looks like he's been in this for quite a while, but I stumbled across his channel a few days ago and watched literally every single video I could find, and on top of all the reading and stuff that I've been doing in preparation for this, but nonetheless, we're set up. We've got our Wideband O2 down here. I routed it straight across the radiator fans where the last one was and followed straight around basically the factory the factory routing, and then I ducked it underneath the plenum in the back and tough, stuffed it down in the boot there. Uh, in the driver's side, let's see. Uh, I've got to finish putting my interior back together. Uh, the wideband cables are kind of just stuffed behind that panel so I could drive for a few minutes. Uh, the AM wideband is not going to live right there next to the MAF translator and the shifter by any means. Uh, the passenger side floorboard, the kick panel still has to go back in, but baby steps, folks, baby steps. So, after a very long time of waiting and wanting this program, we finally have it here. I'm excited to uh, continue to mess with this. Now we're going to have to get into the more serious things that I have sitting upstairs. We've got, we've got some fuel upgrade stuff sitting up there, and I think it's now time to start with that and we also have a very nice um, upgrade for this car on top of ECM link I, I told you in previous videos there's boxes of stuff yes I got tons and tons of stuff sitting up there I bought so much upgrade stuff for this car just over excitement of putting the stuff on but honestly I just haven't had the time to do it so we're gonna be out here wrenching for quite a while so uh, if you guys want to see some pretty cool stuff to come uh, we got a lot of really cool maintenance things lined up uh, we're gonna be doing a clutch swap we have a really nice clutch sitting up there that's gonna go in um, just tons of little things that we're gonna keep doing we've got coil on plug system we're looking at um, there's just tons of stuff I got so many pieces and parts up there I've got some upgrades to what you see right here and we're gonna start putting them on piece by piece now that we have a tuning and logging software that will help us uh, maximize the output of each one of those devices or items that we change so if you guys stuck around till this point uh, hopefully that my experience there installing all this stuff with the ECU and the software helps you get your started up I'm gonna put a link in the description to Scott Laird's channel I want you guys to go check him out he seemed like a super nice guy I actually spoke with him and 
he helped me out with a couple basic things that I had questions about. So, real nice guy, real knowledgeable guy. So, watch his videos. They have tons of great information in them. And make sure you read the forums, read the ECM wiki, whatever you got to do. And uh, until next time, guys, we finally got Link. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.